Well, hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're gonna keep working on this 175 diesel. Uh, we've got a little bit to do here on the back side as far as the brake system goes. Um, so let me flip this thing around and show you what we got. All right, so I got my uh, new parts uh, shipment in today. And uh, here is the new, I should say, good used uh, differential carrier. So we got that. Uh, the other one, of course, was shot. We got our brake linings, we got our rivets. We got new springs for our band uh, brake shoes. We got a new seal for our axle and then a new O-ring as well. And the seal and that O-ring go on the differential carrier right here. We got the O-ring here and then our seal. <clears throat> I did uh, get a new race. This race here looks to be in fine shape. I've inspected that. We'll see what the other one looks like uh, when I pull it out. So we got those parts in. Um, let's get our brake assembly back over here. Here's the outer part of the drum. And that's the part of the lining there. And then this one will go in Oops, grab the wrong one. It'll go in here like so. I'll get my rivets installed. And then the other lining, which is here, would go on the back side of this. But in our case here, this one's fine. So I'm not, uh, not going to replace that one. Looks like there's plenty of wear left. Uh, I'll compare the two here. Just flip this up where we can look at it. And you can see, I mean, there's barely any difference between the two. So I'm not gonna bother with replacing that one. I just don't see any reason to have to do that. So with that said, I'm gonna flip over to the tractor. The uh, next step on the tractor side of this thing is to lower our rear end oil. And we'll have a plug up underneath there. All right, back up in there, we're gonna pull that open and drop the uh, fluid level down a bit. When this opens up, about right here is gonna be my opening in behind us. So I want to make sure that uh, that we get below that. I don't want to open this up and then fill this cavity full of a bunch of oil and create a huge mess. So we'll do that next. Um, while that's uh, draining down, we'll get to work over here on that uh, on that axle seal. All right. So I drained the uh, oil down a bit. Pulled about probably two and a half gallons out of there quite quickly. And my next step here, I'm going to go ahead and take this carrier uh, bearing out of here, um, differential carrier. I've got a half inch um, deep well, <clears throat> which doesn't require a deep well, but I wanted something that was impact um, grade so I didn't have to worry about maybe twisting one of these off. So go ahead and get that on there. These are torqued to 100 foot-pounds, by the way, and that's what we'll put back on him whenever it goes back together. So it's not really taking a ton of force here with my breaker bar to get them loosened up. But I just want to break that, break those loose, and then uh, once we get that done, I'm going to grab my... Uh, drill here and then we'll zip these out real fast so i just want to break them loose that's that's my intention here i think i got one more here yep okay <clears throat> all right i'm gonna grab my drill here There we go. 
All right, so everything looks good inside. I'm looking at the race right now, and it is fine as well. And we get a uh, little closer look of the bearing. Let me grab some light here. All right, so I got some light in here where we can see a little bit closer or a little bit better, and just want to inspect that bearing. And I'm just looking for any kind of pitting. Anything that would be holding us up here. And I don't see a thing. It's nice and nice and smooth. So no issues there. I'm just going to kind of glance in there at my uh, ring gear on the rear end. Make sure I don't have any teeth missing. And I can see the rear input shaft as well up in there. Try to get some light where you all can see that. It's right there. And it looks good. I don't see any teeth messing on that thing. And I can look all the way around that ring gear because I can see it around it. <clears throat> and again, all I'm doing is a visual inspection here. There's no issues whatsoever. So, But when you're opened up like this, it's a good time to check it out. The oil coming out was extremely dirty. So I, th I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and replace that, all of it. I was just gonna to top it off, but I really feel like that we need to replace it because this is lubing uh, the rear end and the transmission right up front of us here. So we zoom out a bit. This separation right here between our hydraulic section and power director over to the gears for your transmission. So from this point all the way back is where we get gear oil. Um, you can also use a hydro trans oil that is good for uh, both rear end and transmission. Um, I believe the book when these were built calls for 8090 gear oil and I'll, I'll confirm that uh, in the manual here before I put oil back in it. <clears throat> but anyway, what I'm seeing here looks good. Um, I've got shims that are on the old carrier that's laying over there on the bench that go right here, and that's gonna set my, um, my pressure against this bearing and our uh, rear end assembly. So I wanna make sure that those get transferred back over. Okay, so here is our replacement. Here's the existing one that come out of there. And we've got these shims in here, so I wanna make sure that I catch all of those and get them reinstalled. I believe that is all of them there. We'll make sure that these get put back onto this new assembly here. Um, on this old one, there's really nothing that we need to keep um, off of it. So it's pretty much scrap where it had cut in that groove. I mean, we're a solid eighth inch in, in on that. Um, so we're gonna put it off to the side here. So I'm not going to need it any longer. And that will let us focus on this new one that we've got right here. Um, step one on this, I'm gonna take my wire brush and I'm just gonna clean up around this surface. We're gonna uh, pull the O-ring off of here, put our new one on, and then we're gonna replace the seal. And to replace the seal, we can just flip this guy over, and I should be able to get right in here with a punch, and we'll just drive that thing down and out of the way. So that shouldn't be that big of a deal. So I'm gonna flip over to my time-lapse camera and uh, go ahead and replace the seal. There's no sense in boring you with that. So. Knock that out, clean it up, and then we'll get it ready uh, for reinstallation. All right, so you saw the time lapse there. Went ahead and put our new seal in. I got a new O-ring, got our shims back in place. 
Really only thing that you gotta watch when you reinstall this is this hole right here. This is a, a seep hole in case that rear seal does go bad. Uh, as oil would drain out, it will come out this hole and not go against your brakes. And then you wouldn't have any brakes. So that's the only thing that you've got to watch. So I've got everything ready to go. So let's head on over here uh, back to the tractor. And we'll get this thing set up here. I cleaned that area up and uh, I've lubed up this O-ring with some Lucas assembly lube. And we're just gonna slide this mechanism right back in there. Again, we're gonna make sure that our weep hole is in the down position. So I got that going just like this. I have to move my light over a little bit so that I can see what I'm doing. So we're just gonna slide him in place like this. You gotta really watch that O-ring because you got a lot of weight pushing down on it. Got all of these started. I'm gonna grab my drill. I'm just gonna ease it on. I wanna set this thing up on probably 75 foot pounds. And then we will work it up to a hundred. All right, so I'm set to a hundred, or I'm sorry, 75 foot pounds. Let's just kind of see where we're at here. Okay. 75 there, and go up here on the top side. Seventy-five. All right. Now I'm gonna slide up. All right, I am now at ninety. And I'm gonna run back through it doing the same thing. Okay, we got all of those torqued down at this point. Everything looks pretty good. So our next step is we're gonna slide over to the hub, the drum I should say, the brake drum assembly. And uh, we're gonna get started on getting those, and, or the new pad and everything on there and get the rivets installed. Um, so let's get set up for that. Okay, so next step is putting the brake lining on here. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. You got your holes and you got your rivets. We're just gonna slide the rivet down through the hole. It is pretty tight there, so let me just give him a little tap. In fact, some of these are off just enough. I'm almost thinking I'm gonna run a little, I think I'm gonna take my drill and I'm just gonna run through there just to open them up. I don't wanna take any chances of cracking that. So let me do that real quick and then we'll jump back in here. All right, so I got them all pushed in there. But underneath here on my vise, I've got a bolt sticking out there. And what I'm going to do is just let it find where the head of that rivet is. And I've got a tapered punch. I'm just going to open those up ever so slightly. Now, it feels like my bolt moved over a bit. It didn't, it was just sliding on there. So with that said, I'm gonna move on. Actually, I might need to 
hold them up just a smidgen more. Just gotta hold it in place and go through and knock them. That's all they need, just a little hit. Spread apart just like that. And that is it. That's all it needs to stay right there. You can buy. All right, so we're going to make the two halves of the drum back together this is the I believe the outside yep this will be the outside because this is the one that was gone that rubbed into uh, that carrier so we're going to take the ball bearings on there like so and then we're going to mate them up with where these are um, it doesn't matter uh, it actually does matter where this hole is needs to line up with that slot and then this slot with the, the larger hole. So we're going to go just like this. That makes the two halves. Now we're going to put our spring down in here and the spring will need to turn inward. This one's going to come up from the other side. But basically what we're doing is we're going to push down through the center of that and then on the other side underneath this it's going to Come through that hole and then over and lock in place. All right, so I found a smaller screwdriver that fits down in there and actually works quite a bit better. It's still tricky to try to get everything to latch in place there. It is doable. So I think I got that one. I think I did. We'll find out once I flip him over. Yep, that one is now in place. You can see right there where it come over the latch. So I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other side. Just gonna continue to hold pressure. So again, the hook portion is gonna turn inward and you kind of have to put it in at an angle. And you can look down in there and that spring will go down kind of to the outside there. And you just get your screwdriver lined up. Got my other screwdriver now. There it is. All right, so we got the other one in place as well. All right, everything looks good there. Next step, we're gonna slide the drum back onto the axle over there. So let's slide over there and get that done. Really not much to it. Uh, we've got a smaller diameter right out here on the front. So a smaller diameter here than what we've got back there. And we got to remember the small pad, the one that is just on the inside there, is going to be going towards the tractor. So, let's slide that in here, like so. And when you look at this, it just does not seem like that makes sense that the smaller pad goes to the inside. Oh, wait a minute. I feel like that it should be Yeah, I want to say the small pad should be on going out. So I want to slide this on here. So I'm getting lined up with our splines. Like so. Now, I'm going to look at that in the manual to see what it's showing. And the reason I'm saying that is when you look at this 
pad on the inside here. It better mates up with the surface. See how that's tapered of this outer um, plate. The inside, we have a much larger diameter here of flat surface. It doesn't cone in. It's really just pretty much straight. So I feel like that this whole surface right here would be the braking surface. So I'm going to head over to the manual and I'm going to check it out and see what it shows. All right, so I'm over here to the manual and what I thought is true. So number eight, which is our friction plate, that's out here that's on our um, axle assembly. It actually has the, the bigger part of the drum facing it. And then this is the inner part that we had replaced and slid in there. That is facing to the inside towards the rear end. So this one was actually in backwards. So let's look over here at our differential, the one that was worn out. And this is why. You can see that this was the small uh, brake shoe. And that small brake shoe should have been turned the other direction. This whole surface out here is the wear surface for the full disc. So we've got this other disc here and you can see this would have covered the entire area. So it was actually, somebody had been in there and worked on those brakes before and put this, uh, or put the brake drum assembly in incorrectly. But no big deal. We've got it in the correct way now. And uh, really, at this point, we're almost ready to assemble this beast, but we've got to install our brake shoes so we got our rear and our front shoe that we've got to get in place and get all of that in there and ready for the drum assembly to slide together so that's what i'm going to do next we're going to get those in we're going to replace our springs i got brand new springs that came in my uh, brake kit so we're going to replace both of those get that assembly in there and then we can slot our uh, axle back into the rear end. All right, so we're gonna install the shoes now. We're gonna renew these springs. So you just pull those out of the way, nothing fancy to it. Lock the new one in place. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our shoe in here. I'm not gonna attach that spring yet. So hopefully it will stay in place for me. Try to hold this while we get the uh, mechanism in place here. So let me, I uh, don't know how much you can see here. I'll try to get a good view. There we go. All right, so this mechanism we've got where they come together. See how it's curved right there? Those are gonna to come together in the center. So we're gonna slide that towards the front of the tractor. And then I'm going to very gently get my pin push through. And that's a lot easier said than done. I'm going to try to get those lined up. Okay. So we got those in there like so. I'll put a new cotter pin in there as well. And I'll tap that thing down. Go ahead and get that bent out of the way if I can.
I just want to make sure that that is out of the way where it cannot get into that drum. Okay, got that one. Um, I could go ahead and stick my spring through the housing up here. But I think I'm gonna wait just a second on that. I wanna get this other assembly in the back done first. Same situation here. I'm gonna slide the assembly in and we're just gonna get that mechanism. This one I might be able to do right up here before it pivots back. So if I could, that would be nice. Yep, I got that one in place. I try to get my hand out of the way. It's just a tight spot to work. All right. Another cotter pin. All right, I'm gonna get me a smaller cotter pin. This one just feels like it's a little bit too big to fit. All right, another size cotter pin. We'll get that locked in place here. Okay, we got that. Let's see, I guess next is gonna be our brake pin up here at the top in this hole, and that's gonna hold our whole assembly together. Um, before, as I mentioned, I got kind of lucky on this one because it came out really easy because somebody had lubricated that thing up before. So, let's grab that and then we'll get it installed next. All right, so I got the pin, I've got that thing lubed up so that we can slide right in like that. We're gonna bring the brake assembly, I might have to move my light here, to bring the brake assembly up. And those two units are gonna to come together like so, and my, my spring come out on this front. So I'm gonna get that thing reposition first. Not quite sure how it came out so easy. I must have twisted. So another thing you could do if your spring keeps popping out of there, you could just get you some vice grips on that thing. All right, so let me go ahead and start. We're gonna put the pin in this first one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get our rear shoe. All the springs look good on that. I'm just gonna pull it up because they, they're gonna lock in place here, just like this. I'm gonna push the pin in once I kind of get him locked like that. And that's all there is to it. It's not really too awfully difficult. So we've got our pin in place. We've got our both shoes where they need to be. We've got both of our springs in place and we got tension on those. And all that's gonna do is hold it off of our brake drum. That brake drum's gonna slide right in this cavity. All right, so next step is I need to put some assembly lube on that seal. And then we're gonna grab the axle, get it wheeled over here and get it slid in. So let me get that lubed up and then we'll get the axle installed. All right, let's slide her together.
Okay, there we go. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get one of the nuts on here started so that we don't slide back. And that's gonna hold us right in place. One more here, it's down here on this bottom side. Next step, I'm just gonna go through, reinstall my bolts. And then I believe those are torqued at about 100 foot pounds as well. Um, I will check the manual on that and then we'll get them torqued up. All right, so the torque spec on these is uh, a lot higher than what I thought. It's actually 210 foot pounds. So I've got my torque wrench set to 150. I want to torque them at 150 first, and then I will reset my wrench, and we'll hit it again at the 210. That's got. All right, at this point, we've got everything retorqued. Um, really set in pretty good shape at the moment. Next step is our hydraulic cylinder down here. Remember, we had to get that thing out of the way, so I'm gonna slide it back in place. We'll stick our pin in right there. Um, one thing on that pin, when you put it in there is make sure that you got the hole that your uh, pin's gonna be coming through. So make sure it's facing up because it's gonna come in right here. So I'm gonna clean that thing off a bit. So when we slide it in there, we'll make sure that pin is up and we shouldn't have any issues with it. So I'm gonna get set up, get that thing installed. I think I'm gonna flip over to time lapse on that. It's about all there is to explain on that piece of it. So let's flip over time lapse. All right, so you saw there on the time lapse, uh, we finished reassembly on uh, all of our sheet metal and our seat components and the cover for the brake assemblies there on the top. We got all that squared away. Um, the only last thing I'm gonna do, and that will happen once this uh, back left rear tire is installed, is I will set uh, the adjustment on that brake, on that new one that we just put in. Everything should be fine. Um, the adjustment that you're really doing is the travel between the drag of the um, brake shoes on the outer ring to the drum. And that we didn't change. Those are the same shoes, the same everything. So um, anyway, uh, we'll figure that out once we have the, the rear tire installed here. So anyway, hopefully that was helpful. Something that you can use if you're working on a 175, uh, 170, even the 180s and 185s are uh, very similar to what you're seeing there, if not identical. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, share the video, and we'll see you next time.